So that's the plan uh, so far. Um, for anyone who wants to learn more, there's uh, freestateproject.org is our website. You can also uh, find us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, we are, uh, the best way to figure out um, what, what we're doing and what we're up to is to actually come and visit. And we've got several events that happen throughout the year. Liberty Forum, I already mentioned, Pork Fest. There's another one uh, called Free Coast Fest that's happening uh, this September. I think it's the third annual one. They do a lovely little boat cruise out of uh, Portsmouth. Um, and you can also come at any other time of the, there, there's, there's events basically every day of the week, uh, all, you know, every day of the month. Um, there's a nhcalendar.org has a shared Google calendar that shows all the different meetup groups that are happening all over the state. Um, you know, basically every day and about five times on Saturdays. Um, and uh, if you're going to visit, please send us an email at visit nh at freestateproject.org and uh, we will uh, coordinate with you to uh, get you uh, connected to uh, whatever's going happens to be going on uh, at that time. Um, what else can I talk about? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up to questions because I think uh, every, every group has a slightly different level of how much they, how much they know about what's going on. Uh, with us up there or why we chose New Hampshire. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up to questions. Um, yeah. Uh, hang, hang on a second. Let me just come over here. I was brought up in the neighboring state of Massachusetts where the license plates say, live as we say or die. <laughs> but it's, it seemed to me over a number of years that New Hampshire uh, has become less and less of an anomaly in uh, New England uh, and uh, has uh, voted uh, less and less in conformity with the state motto. Uh, can you comment on that? Sure. Yeah, so this, this is definitely one of the trends that's been happening over the last 20 or 30 years is the Massachusetts, I won't use the, the familiar term for people from Massachusetts, but uh, they, they, they see what's happening in Massachusetts, it's going down the tubes, and so they decamp and they move up to lovely Queen, New Hampshire, and then promptly vote for all the same you know, social programs and over-regulation that is you know, problematic for Massachusetts. So uh, we've been sort of uh, paddling against the current on, on that for the last, uh, um, I don't know, 20 or 30 years or so up, uh, up in New Hampshire. And they used to talk about the New Hampshire advantage, and now they talk about how we're, you know, we've lost that New Hampshire advantage. And I think that, but for the Free State Project, having been there for the last 10 years, it would be a lot worse uh, than it currently is. And of course, once we actually, um, you know, approach full strength uh, in New Hampshire, our hope is that we'll be able to, to stem the tide and, and in fact reverse it. Um, but yes, that is a thing, that is a, that is a factor that's going on there. And if you look at some of the, um, you know, some of the big uh, uh, issues there, you know, like, um, Marijuana decriminalization, right? Uh, we, uh, Vermont, Maine, and Massachusetts are all better on, on weed than New Hampshire is. Um, guns, uh, Vermont and Maine now both have constitutional carry. New Hampshire has very lax gun laws, but not yet uh, to the degree that, that those states have, obviously still, still better than Massachusetts. Um, the Free State Project, you know, the, the promise of the Free State Project is that we, um, you know, if you, if you move, and enough of us, uh, you know, enough people do move, then we'll be able to accomplish really great things. Um, but that hasn't really started happening yet. You know, we've had a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, medium victories, but nothing, you know, nothing major yet that you know, everyone around the world is looking at going, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. Um, that will happen, that will come, and then once that starts happening, everybody will say, oh geez, I guess I better go to New Hampshire if I want to actually have a chance of living in a, you know, a freer, uh, freer more, more libertarian society. Um, but the thing that the thing that I think is difficult to explain, you know, talking in a in a conference uh, conference room in Las Vegas, is um, it, but but that you can see on full display if you come up to to visit or, at one of our events is there is this amazing, huge, uh, vibrant, tight knit community of like minded individuals that is is um, always meeting up and always doing things and doing different all kinds of different forms of activism. Um, plenty of people that don't do activism, they're just there, they're raising their families, they're starting a business, they're um, you know, living their lives. Um, so even if, even if we never achieve a single, you know, even if we never repeal a single regulation or we never reduce a single tax, you can still get the benefit of living in this community that um, is so valuable and so powerful and is why so many of us 
decided that we wanted to move in advance is because we went to go visit and we were like, oh man, we gotta, you know, I just, I wanna live here, I don't care if they ever, you know, if anyone else ever moves, I just, I, I love it here. So that's really hard to, to sort of, ex, you know, sh give you a taste of it without you, you know, coming and visiting, so. Yeah? Yeah, I wanted to ask you how much freedom there is for different professions. Like if you wanted to be a teacher, or nutritionist, doctor, whatever, is there a lot of government licensing and red tape you have to go through? There is a fair amount of uh, professional licensing. Uh, sorry, the question is um, about professional licensing and, and if for, for different uh, for different industries or, or professions, how, how much regulation or red tape is there? Um, for example, a teacher. Um, there's a, it's, not an, it's not an area that I know a lot about. I know that we do have some professional uh, uh, licensing uh, and regulation. Uh, we, one, we have a teacher in the, in the front row right here um, who could probably speak to it a little bit. Um, as an example of the kind of, uh, some of the activism that's happening, um, you know, one of the professions, that, and this is a profession that's pretty annoyingly regulated uh, most of the country, I think, is um, esthetician and, and cosmetologist, right? So if you want to give somebody a pedicure, you got to do 1,600 hours of, of you know, training and license, you know, under uh, an existing uh, you know, teacher or whatever. So there was a gentleman, and, and you know, help me with the story, uh, there was a gentleman who basically promoted to say, I am going to give somebody a pedicure for $1 on the steps of the, was it in the public square, or was it on the... I, I believe it was a park in Concord. It, it may have park. been the state house. Yeah, I mean, it was the state house. Anyway, and they, it was publicized, and they showed up, and the guy took, you know, it was, it was uh, took, took, was it a guy or a girl? I don't know. Mike Fisher was his name. Yeah, so he took a sock, you know, the person's sock off, and they clipped one toenail, and then they got arrested and charged with, what was it, like a $10 fine or something, like, something just ridiculous. Um, but that's the kind of you know the kind of thing that happens all the time in New Hampshire, where it's it's people that are working really hard to sort of expose the ridiculousness of of you know how far how bad it's gotten for some of these kinds of regulations. So there di different uh, there is some of that in New Hampshire, as I said, um, that's the kind of thing that exists everywhere. But in nowhere else outside of New Hampshire are you going to see the level of attention and activism. Not just now, but especially you know, moving into the next several years, where we're going to be able to start to repeal some of that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how visible is the Free State Project uh, among uh, people that already live there, and what's its reputation? How have you been received? That's a great question. The question is about uh, the reputation uh, or the visibility of the Free State Project in New Hampshire. Um, I think most people that are you know at all uh, politically aware or you know keeping up with current events has probably heard of us uh, one, you know one way or another. Um, there are uh, there are some of the activists uh, who have a little bit more of a, of a sort of aggressive in your face style. There's the the Robin Hooders who um, walk ahead of the meter maids and feed the meters so that the people who are parked there uh, who have expired uh, meters don't get a, a ticket. Um, and there's there's been a little they've got a little bit of flack for that, um, but there are lots and lots of free staters who have not been uh, you know who are basically unknown as free staters because they're very quiet about it. They live their lives. They talk to their neighbors and their colleagues. They run for office even, and um, people just are like, oh, I don't know, they're nice. And then they find out you know sometimes years later that they're a free stater and they're like, oh, well, okay, that whatever I. That doesn't affect my, you know, opinion of them at all because they are, you know, they, yeah, I've been working with them for years. Uh, so it, it's becoming more, especially now that you know, since we got a lot of a lot of press at the beginning of this year for having tr triggered the move, um, it's a lot more well known. Um, Carla uh, Carla Garrick is the former president. She's right right back here. She was just, uh, you know, did an hour long segment on uh, the the NHPR, the local NPR uh, uh, station. Um, talking about the Free State Project and its impact and everything, so it's definitely um, you know for anyone who's who's interested at all in, in the political scene there, you know, yeah, everyone knows what it is, and it, it depends to some degree on what side of the political spectrum you're on. Obviously, the liberal progressive Democrats generally don't you know aren't our biggest fans, uh, and never will be. Fine. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, you know, a lot of the, the sort of the, the right wing conservatives, um, they. Um, you know, we work with them on some issues, and we work against them on, on some other issues, and it's a, you know, it's a, an alliance of, you know, varying, 
varying levels of support depending on what issue we're talking about. Um, so I think, but if you ask, and I've done this a lot, um, you, you, the average New Hampshire person, you know, man on the street who you know, doesn't really isn't doesn't really care and isn't paying attention, you walk and say, "Hey, have you heard of the Free State Project?" And they go, "No." I say, "Well, it's you know, twenty thousand people. It's a New Hampshire libertarian." You know, generally, the response is, oh, "Okay, live free or die." Right on, man. Welcome. It's it's you know that most people I think are their their first instinct is to say, "Okay, yeah, sure, that's fine. I, I don't want the government on my back either." On the uh, second batch, you started since the since the triggering date. Have you noticed the, sign, the, the rate of signing signees to or signers to uh, have increased, decreased, stayed about the same? And second part, uh, what kind of deadline are you giving them? Is it five years from the trigger date, or five years from the sign, or some other future deadline? Right. So um, now that we've we've you know closed the assurance contract, right, and we've had, there's 20,000 people that are have agreed to move there. Regardless, so um, we we now you know up until now we have had to ask for a pretty big commitment from people, right? You, we, we're asking you to pledge to move to uproot your life and quit your job or move your business, take your kids out of school, put your house on the market, all of that, and uproot your life and move to New Hampshire. That's a really big ask. We don't have to do that anymore. Now we can just say, hey, sign up for the newsletter, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. And eventually, over the next several years, you will see what's happening on the ground in New Hampshire. And it will get, we'll hit the tipping point, right? It'll get to the point where you're seeing what's going on, and even without us having had to ask you to make that big commitment, you're gonna decide for yourself, hey, I, it, I, can, see what, I can see the writing on the wall, I can see what's going on, I need to be in New Hampshire. Um, honey, let's move. So, um, and we haven't been pushing, we haven't been, been pushing, so we haven't been pushing people to make that same pledge. So they haven't, you know, have, hasn't been signing up as fast enough. In fact, everyone who has signed up since then, it's uh, several hundred, uh, that's all been just organic, you know, people reading a, our article about us online and coming to our website and saying, oh yeah, that sounds like that's something I want to be a part of. So, you know, and obviously the five years is, is a, you know, is a deadline. If you miss that, uh, you know, it's not like you can't move, right? We'll happily accept you in year six. Um, and I've talked, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who, you know, because of how old their kids are, or you know, how many more years they have left in school, or you know, uh, paying off their debt, you know, even though they're now a, you know, a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, it's like they've got to do that before they can, you know, their kids are in college and then they feel like they're they're free to move about the country, as Southwest Airlines puts it. Yeah. Geographically, up to 2000, the move is is there a one locale that, uh, you know, where most moved and of the 20,000, where do you think geographically most are gonna end up? So the Free State, the question is about where in New Hampshire people are moving. Uh, the Free State Project itself doesn't, you know, care where you move to as long as it's in, in New Hampshire. Um, that said, there are a couple of, uh, uh, you know, uh, factors that affect that. One is just the natural population densities in, in New Hampshire. Um, but 90% of the population in New Hampshire is within 50 miles of Manchester. So that encompasses Keene in the west and Portsmouth in the, in the east and you know, Concord. And it's going to I guess it goes up to Laconia on, the, in the, on Lake Winnipesaukee and in Nashua. And Manchester and Nashua are the two, the two biggest cities. Um, so it generally tends to sort of follow, you know, obviously in the cities there are, there are more people um, and then it sort of spreads out from there. Um, so, and it, and it, you know, where an individual decides they, you know, is best for them to live depends a little bit on what they're looking for. If they're looking for, you know, to have a place that is in a city where there's a lot of activism and a lot of activity and, and restaurants and nightclubs and stuff like that, okay, you're gonna end up in Manchester or somewhere near it. Um, if you wanna be off the grid in the middle of the woods, then, you know, you're gonna be a little bit farther out um, for that. And there's plenty of places in New Hampshire that are, that are for you. Um, if you want, if you are, uh, you know, in, in the tech sector, and you think, you know, Boston, the sort of Boston area is going to be a, um, you know, a, a better job market for you, then maybe you, you would think about living along one of the southern uh, border towns that makes the commute into into Massachusetts a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, we don't. Th there's one. Uh, there's one effort that I know of to to uh, really get people to move to a specific town. It's a, a Grafton up in a little bit further north. Uh, it's the southernmost town that has no zoning laws in, in New Hampshire.
Accenture. So for years now, they've been recruiting people that move there. Um, but pretty much every every community in New Hampshire is recruiting people to move to their area. It's a pretty vibrant free coast, um, what, what, what we call the sea coast uh, towns, uh, to get people to move there. Uh, you know, the, people, the folks that are over in Keene uh, have a pretty com uh, um, you know dedicated effort to to promote you know Keene as a as a destination for for new movers. Um, it it really depends. How people adapt to a cold climate because people like in Nevada are not used to being cold like that. Wait for cold. Cold for warm. <laughs> yeah, right. So questions about uh, adapting to the to the winter. Um, this is this the one of the two major objections that we get from people as to why they don't move. One is one is a job. I need a job before I move, and the other is the winter. Um, and I have a few different answers for that. The first is I grew up in Phoenix. And if I can do it, you can do it. And if that's the biggest sacrifice you have to make for liberty, then that's awesome. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not going to be. But um, we just put up a we recently put up a, a page on our website, which uh, the URL I'm blanking on the URL. Carla, do you remember the URL for that? I think it's freestateproject.org/weather. Um, that basically is a comparison of the winter in, in New Hampshire to the winter of a whole bunch of other um, places along you know the northern third of the United States, including Detroit and Chicago and, and Denver. Um, it's better than you know every city in Canada except for Vancouver. It's an easier winter than Beijing, than Copenhagen, um, than Moscow, um, than large swaths of, of you know, Northern Europe. Um, so, um, and I also spent nine years in New York City, right, where in New York City, if you want to go anywhere, you have to walk outside. And, between the buildings, which funnel all the wind, and you got to walk for several blocks to get to the subway, which somehow is colder than the rest of the air temperature. Um, in New Hampshire, I get into my car in my garage, which is heated, and I turn on my seat heaters, and I drive to where I'm going, and then I